on this Tuesday night to be in revival. What a time we've been having in the house of God, and I've come tonight expecting greater to take place in this house tonight. Amen. If you will, stand with me all over the house as we open up with prayer tonight. Amen. If you've got a need tonight before the Lord, will you just signify by the raise of hand? Amen. God knows that need tonight, and I believe God can meet that need in this house tonight. Amen. Let's pray together, if you will. Dear gracious, divine, heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you tonight once again so thankful for this great blessing that you've given to us, Lord, to be in your house tonight. And I pray, God, that you touch and move in this service tonight. God, I pray for every song that's sung, God. Lord, every part of this service tonight, God, I pray that you touch and anoint tonight. God, touch and anoint the messenger tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that you use him in a mighty way tonight, God. I pray, Lord, for this service, God, for an outpouring of the power of the Holy Ghost to fall in this house tonight. God, I just pray for every need that's in this house tonight. God, we pray that you touch and move upon the needs and the desires of your people tonight. God, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor for what you're going to do in this service tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Let's give him praise tonight. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. here tonight in revival service. Let's help us sing the unclouded day. They tell me of a hole far beyond Stay here longer than man. 
dance a lot of days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven way. But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell him, sing love story there on high, there with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. And day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever. God, I'm looking forward to that day that we live in glory. Amen. Praise God. Just as the scripture says that for we will forever be in the presence of the Lord. And the scripture tells us to comfort one another with these words. I'm looking for the return of our risen Savior. Amen. Where we can spend eternity with him. Amen. Again, it's so good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord on this Tuesday night in revival. We're glad that you're here. Amen. It's good to have all of our visitors here with us. And we got Brother Danny Lawless and uh, Sister Glenda over here and their granddaughters. Let's give them a good warm welcome tonight. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. We're, we're glad they're here. Amen. And Brother Danny, you get your song together, brother. Amen. Because it's coming. Praise God. Amen. But we're glad to have them here with us tonight and all of our visitors. Uh, we're glad to have you here with us. Amen. We want to worship the Lord in the giving of our tithes and offerings tonight. Amen. Our offerings. We'll go to the man of God tonight, and uh, we want to uh, bless him. Amen. He's been blessing us with the preaching of the word of God this week, and we want to bless him again tonight. Uh, so we ask that you give, amen, diligently tonight from your heart. Amen. I need some ushers tonight that will come and help me. need eight of you brothers that will help me tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord. In this house tonight, amen. Praise God, amen. Praise God, amen. Praise God, amen. Brother Paul, if you will, bless this offering tonight.
Let's give our musicians a good hand. Amen. They've been faithful in every service of this revival, and we love and appreciate our musicians tonight. Amen. Brother Danny, are you ready? Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. It's so good to have them here with us tonight. Amen. Sister Glenn, just stand and say something for the Lord, if you will, while he's coming. Yes, amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise tonight. Amen. Praise God. Worship Brother Danny tonight. I didn't bring no music, so my granddaughter got it on the phone, so if I'm staring down, it ain't because I'm bored. But listen, I like to I like to give a testimony, if I may. Uh, I told Brother Eric... And and I don't feel right if I don't give God praise. Many years ago, I don't know how many exactly, over 10, I guess, I became a diabetic, take five shots a day. Well, on September the 5th, I haven't received another shot, and I'm doing great. <laughs> and uh, Nevada, your phone kicked off. Now what I do? I got it. Oh, scroll up. I got the word. That's these young kids. I don't know how to do this. I just know how to turn the phone on. You got the word. She got the word. Thank God we got the word. Now I can see. I appreciate Brother Eric always making me feel at, feel at home, which I am at home. This is my home church. But that ain't all about my diabetes. I don't take no more blood pressure medicine. And I was always praying for everybody. I mean, I was always praying for myself a lot. Lord, heal me. I, I want to be healed. I want to feel better. I always felt bad. Even when I got it and preached, I felt awful. But then when I started praying for other people and forgot about myself, Brother Jeff, then I realized, I told Glenn, I said, wait a minute, I ain't took a shot for a week. Then it went two weeks, then three weeks, then four weeks. And I'm still good. Let me tell you how good I am. I eat a piece of cake and it don't bother me. I, I've got to give him praise, saints. He's been good to me. He's never let me down. Oh, you got, oh, I, I was looking at the other song there. I thought, no, wait a minute, I don't know this song. Oh, I flipped it over. I got you. Okay. Somewhere beyond the grave, there is a land that Jesus went to prepare by his own hand. And for the saved by grace, there is a resting place. A few more days, it will be mine. Some call it heaven, but I call it home. And some call it dreaming, why well, just let me dream on. Some call it paradise Somewhere beyond the sky And some call it heaven But I call it home Someone said you can't go back home again that it will never be as good as it's been. But I've got good news for you. 
when heaven comes into view. And just one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. And some call it heaven. Well, I call it home. And some call it dream. Just let me dream on And some call it paradise Somewhere beyond the sky And some call it heaven Well, I call it home And some call it heaven but I call it home. Listen, I'm at the best church in the world. Except for Mama's Hill Church here at Town. And this is my home church. Yeah. And I love you people. I always have. And I think I think I think I'm getting hung up because there's no good in the mind. There's ain't nothing in those ears. Ain't nothing worth going on. I'm going to try to sing a chorus of song, but before I do, I, uh, I appreciate Pastor Lawless and his wife and family. We have, uh, since retired pastoring, I've had uh, revivals there and scheduled again next year, and these are sweet, precious people. I love them so much. I've known Pastor Lawless for many years, and uh, he's always been a friend. And I, I just love this love this brother so much, and uh, his family, and uh, thank God for what they're doing at their church, growing, and and uh, their daughter has uh, let us stay at one of her rental properties while we're here in revival, and uh, through the church here, and we stayed when we were pat revivaling at his church and. Heather is a beautiful saint of God and, and uh, worship leader to the church and this whole family are special. And uh, Pastor Lawless told me when I walked in, when I was uh, pastoring in uh, Wortland, we had a funeral director, uh, Bob Green. He'd have long-winded uh, preachers come in the funeral home and just didn't have no wisdom about nothing. And he knew some of them. So he'd stand in the back with a sign, K-I-S, keep it short. <laughs> and uh, when I walked in, the pastor told me, he said, I got a long ways to drive tonight, so keep it short. <laughs> Amen. Love, love you all so much. Good to have my sister and brother-in-law back with me. The other sister had to go home today. Love, brother, love my family so much, pastor. And family, thank you all. I, I, I talked to my wife today. We, we've discussed and just talked, but you, you know, you, you, you can drive the country over, but you know when you got good people, when you see good people, and you're good people. And uh, I don't know you like Pastor does, but I know that, that uh, you love God, and you have a passion for the Lord, and, and you're looking for the coming of the Lord. And uh, these musicians, I mean, I go to some revivals. That I, I, a lot of times I carry music with me. I play guitar, and my wife plays piano. And some churches just has no music. And, uh, and they have to do what they can. But you ought to be thankful. I want to tell you, opera, the opera house ain't got nothing what, on you all. <laughs> nothing. Not at all. And you ought to be thankful for, for the gifts and talents that God has got here. I want to sing. Let's stand before I go to the Lord of the Lord. 
just a key of A, just a course of how great they are. And uh, let's worship the Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Sing it, everybody, church. Then sings my soul. Sing it, church. Glory. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Oh, I feel his presence. Sing it just once again, then sings my soul. Say, dear God, to thee, glory, how great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 All worshiping. Play it, brother. Praise him, church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, I feel your presence in this house. Glory. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art oh could you give him praise in the house well I feel the presence of the Lord in this house hallelujah can we do that one more time? It sings my soul. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How great thou art. It sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Now give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. While you're standing in Proverbs chapter 22, one verse, Proverbs 22. 28. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. 
Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. I'd like to talk about that tonight. Give God praise as you're being seated. Every one of you that owns property or when you bought property, they had to do a title deed search. And you got boundaries. Back in the old days, they put a stone in a corner. And, and uh, today they do it more uh, sophisticatedly. But uh, you know where your boundary lines were. And uh, you made sure nobody come over on your land. Shake your little head at me. I know, uh, I don't know him personally, but there was a man in Danville, Kentucky killed uh, because he kept riding his lawnmower over on his neighbor's property. And the neighbor got tired of it and shot and killed him. I'd be happy if somebody mowed my grass. <laughs> but the point was, he didn't want nobody on his land, and I can understand that. And so... The Bible warns us not to remove our old landmarks. A landmark can be something that's a custom or tradition, a teaching or standard. Our Christian faith is filled with traditions and teachings passed down from generations. I know there were some things growing up years before I was even born that the church of God stood against. Some of it was silly. Some of y'all in here would never make it to heaven if you live by those things back those days. Because back then they did not believe in drinking coffee. It was against the church teachings. It was against the church teachings to... Uh, to uh, wear a tie, you couldn't wear a tie years ago. You had to wear long white sleeve shirts. I could go on and on. There are some things we better hold on to and not let go of. Uh, we had hair traditions. We had we had dress traditions. Some of those things we better not let go of, uh, as far as dress and things. And th this this is funny. Uh, but also, it was Brother Aaron's, it was against the church teachings to drink Coca-Cola. And the reason why, because that little glass bottle looked like a figure of a woman. Now we drink two liters. <laughs> but that's true. There's some things that I think we need to ask God to help us with because it wasn't, just wasn't right. Right? Right? It, it, just, it was just silly stuff. But there are some traditions we better not let go of. Our Christian faith is filled with traditions and teaching passed down from generations. There are some things that my father put into me that my kids do. I know they're going to go to heaven, and, and, and I know that for a fact. But there's some things instilled in me that my mother and father put in me, and I'm just turned 67, I will not do today because my dad and mom told me never to do it. You're going to think it's just funny, but I don't care. My mom and dad told me never to wear shorts, and I don't wear shorts. Now, I can go to heaven if I do, but I ain't going to wear them because I don't want my dad to see me. <laughs> Amen. That's just, that's just the way I was raised. And I'm not apologetic for it. I know it ain't anybody going to shout with me tonight, but that's all right. But, but that's just the way I was raised, and I respect. Even though mom and dad's in heaven, I respect my mom and dad. I was raised not to go to the movie house, theaters. I don't go to them. I went one time. Everybody said, you need to go see the passion. You need to go see the passion. I did. I felt guilty the whole time I was there. I felt my dad's going to. He's going to whoop me for being in this theater watching The Passion. I know it, it, wasn't, it, it was a good movie. We know that. But the point I'm trying to make, 
some of these things I think we need to be apologetic for, but there's other things we better not let go of. Oh, somebody said amen. They've held the church together. Praise God. And it's landmarks. I as an evangelist, no more a pastor, but not, not as just as an evangelist pastor, Danny, but, but as a child of God, I will not move landmarks that God has for the church. Can somebody give him praise right there? You see, if we start to move an ancient landmark of God's word, we shift further away from God. And that's what has happened in many of our churches. They have replaced the landmarks and have shifted further away from God. God, help us. To, he, said, he said, remove not the ancient landmarks with our fathers. We know how Joshua put stones here and Moses put stones here. And that's what he was talking about. But on the spiritual sense, uh, there's some landmarks in the Word of God that we better not stray away from. Because I want to <coughs> tell you, I am where I am today because somebody didn't move the landmark. I am where I am today because somebody, amen, made sure that the landmark stayed right. Right where it was. I am where I am today because somebody had the desire and passion to make sure we stood on the same ground our forefathers had stood on. I feel a preacher in this house. Oh, somebody praise him in this house. Well, glory to God. So many have fallen asleep since the landmarks have been moved. They have learned to tolerate When you move landmarks, we learn to tolerate what was rejected. We, we now tolerate homosexuality. We used to reject it. We learn to tolerate girls having babies out of wedlock. Oh, Lord. And we got to love those kids. We got to pull them in. I had a church member at Stanford Church of God years ago when the Church of God built that uh, a home for unwedded mothers in Sevierville, Tennessee. He came to me and he said, Preacher, I've paid my last time into the church of God. He said, when we started taking in babies, having babies, uh, he said, I ain't giving the church another dime. I want somebody's got to love them little girls. Sin is sin, yeah, sin is sin. But, but, but the point I'm trying to make is uh, what, what once, Lord help me, what once we tolerated, we, or Lord, we've learned to tolerate what we once rejected. Back in those days, and sin is sin, and you ought to be ashamed of sin if a girl gets that way. But here's what happens in the church today. I know I'm meddling today. Here's what happens in the church today. We have a big old shower. And parade it. Oh. Look, yeah, you're looking at me like a deer in the headlights. We have a big shower and parade it and say, it's okay that another girl gets pregnant. And I want to tell you, somewhere we got to draw a line and say, yes, it's wrong, but we got to love them to the cross. we got to love them. we got to take them babies and raise them in our churches. But my God, we don't need to parade fornication and adultery. Lord, if I preached that 30 years ago, they'd shout me down. You know, here's the problem. We've learned to tolerate it because we have moved landmarks. Amen. We've learned to, we've learned to <laughs> compromise because we've moved landmarks. There is what we call in the church today. We'll read it here in a few moments in the Word of the Lord. A Jezebel spirit. Why? Because landmarks have been moved. Amen? And back when, uh, if, my, if my father-in-law was preaching on Jezebel, he'd preach on makeup and hair and jewelry and everything else. But that's not the Jezebel. Jezebel is a controlling spirit. 
Jezebel's a spirit that gets in the church, amen, and moves landmarks so that homosexuality can be in the pulpit and nobody has any problem with it. So that lesbians can be in the pulpit and the choir, nobody has any problem with it. Amen. So that so that so that fornicators, uh, amen, can sit on the Lord help me, sit on the uh, platform and play music uh, and nobody has any issue. I want to tell you, seeing a sin, there ought to be some times, praise God, and we got to guard the landmarks of the church. Uh, you see, the Jezebel spirit is a controlling spirit. Uh, she controls the pastors. She controls the elders. She controls the leaders uh, to gain influence over them. Uh, once Jezebel spirit, uh, hear me tonight, gets in control, that spirit will lead the leadership uh, and the church into sin. Uh, hear me, somewhere we got to have men and women in the church that will say, this is a landmark that my forefathers planted and I will not let sin and tolerate and move the landmark of the church. Somebody give him praise in this house. You see, perversion and, and immorality because of her. Good will become evil and evil good. So the landmarks have been moved. Outdated. We don't need old time religion anymore. I got news for you. If it was good for Paul and Silas, it's good for me. If it was good for Peter, it was good for me. If it was good for the apostles, it was good for me. If it was good for your mom and daddy, it's good for me. And what, what got them there, I ain't changing. <laughs> what got them to glory, I'm going to hang on, Brother McQuarrie, with it. What got them to heaven? I'm not changing it, praise God. I'm not going to let the devil put a house on my land for the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to let him put a rent shack on my land. My God, this land is spilled by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the land of God. It's the holy land, praise God. And we must hold on to them old landmarks because that's what's going to get us through. Somebody praise him. So when we lose landmarks, pastors take a new approach in the church. Old-fashioned Holy Ghost preaching is no longer in the church. Amen? Because we move landmarks. We don't need to preach like that. Well, can I tell you, you remember when you got saved? You remember... Praise God, it was old-fashioned preaching the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody was anointed. It ain't your homiletical mind that got anybody saved. Sure wasn't your looks. Wasn't your money. No, somebody, Pastor Richardson, was anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost. It was like your daddy talked, or your, your daddy talked at the funeral of the day. And Papa, <coughs> Brother Richardson's Papa got saved, and Brother Richardson's daddy wasn't saved. And, 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 and Brother uh, Richardson's Papa not kept knocking on Brother Larry's door. And Brother Larry told his wife, uh, Act like we sleep. We don't want Daddy in here because he's wanting to preach to us. But that didn't stop Papa Richardson. He kept pecking on Brother Larry's door, and Brother Larry says, "Hush, Sister Richardson. We don't want him to know. We we want him to think we're asleep. I don't want to hear Daddy." And Brother Richardson said, "Him and his wife went all way one time to the other in the trailer, make sure they weren't at the front door. And somehow Papa knew they was at the other in the trailer pecking on the window. It's time to go to church. It's time to go to church." It's time to go to church. It's time, Lord help me. It's time to go to church now. And today we tell them it's time to stay home. It's time to stay home. It's time to stay home. Uh, you don't need to go to church. Uh, but he kept pecking on that window until that boy's daddy gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to understand that's landmarks I'm talking about. Uh, my God, I feel the Lord. Uh, we talk about we want to save Africa. We talk about we want to be missionaries. Uh, amen to New Mexico and around the world. We want to raise money and do all that. And that's good. We got to do that. But what about your own son? What about your own daughter? What about your own mama? What about your own daddy? If you ain't got enough desire, amen, to pray and knock on their window, stop giving the missions in Africa because you're wasting your time. Oh, God, help us understand. We got to have a passion for our family. 
seem no longer effective. So when you move, move, move landmarks, you got new methods of the gospel. There ain't no new method of the gospel. There's only one gospel. Oh, Lord, help me. We need to all, here's what we are. You're not like this. But Brother Danny, here's what we are. When we move our landmarks, we try to offer worldly entertainment in our churches to pull worldly people in. Amen. We do. We 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 want it. We 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 like we like we like watch on MTV. Oh, if we could just if we could just get us a couch on our platform and two end tables and a cup of coffee and bring in Tim Tebow. I like Tim Tebow. If we could bring in Tim Tebow, my God, we can grow a church. No, you ain't gonna do it. We can't adopt the worldly mentality to have a church. But I tell you what you can do. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> praise God. You can get anointed. Praise God. I want to tell you something. We don't need MTV in our churches. We don't need our churches. Amen. Lord help me. Amen. To be honky tonks. Praise God. We need, to, we need to offer methods of the world. We need to reach out to the world with worldly things. People need entertainment. My God you got entertainment six days a week. Why in the world do you need entertainment on Sunday? We don't need entertainment on Sunday. We need somebody hot with the Holy Ghost. We need somebody anointed with the Holy Ghost. We don't need, my God, you got five televisions in your house. You got entertainment in the bedroom, entertainment in the kitchen, entertainment in the man cave, entertainment in the she shed. Amen. We got it everywhere. But I want to tell you, it's time to get to the mark and say, God, we want revival, but we want it your way and not the world's way. Lord, help us. So we don't need to discuss sin in the church because we got a, a lot of sinners. Sinners don't need to feel comfortable in our Pentecostal churches. I said sinners don't need to feel comfortable. They need to feel loved. They need to feel wanted. But they don't need to feel comfortable in our churches. My God, we got preachers that say, they say, well, if I can just get them to play a guitar, they'll get saved. No, you're allowed and sin on the pulpit. But you, what you've got to do is get them saved, then put them on the pulpit. Amen. Landmarks. I, I pastored a couple. They got saved coming to church. I mean, he's a good guitar player. And she could whack him drum. And, and they were there for a little while. We put them to work for the Lord. Find out they've been living together for seven years. What do you do? i tell you what you do. You set them down in love in your office and say, listen, Jack and Jill, you both do very well. But... This pastor will not let you play any longer. My brother-in-law shaking his head. He knows what I'm talking about. Him, my sister, my wife. Amen. They were there. I said, you cannot play no more music in this church until you two get married. And when you get married, you're welcome to get back on them drums. And you're welcome to get back on the guitar. But you got to get. But we've got common law marriage seven years. I said, no, you ain't married. You go to the courthouse, get you some documented papers. You come to me or find somebody else. You get married God's way, the biblical way, the state way, the county way, the government way. And then you can play in the church. Can I tell you, there's landmarks that have been moved. We don't care anymore any way they live. But my God, we want revival. There's got to be cleanness and wash and blood and purity and sanctity in the house of God. Amen. We don't need celebrity pastors. We need John the Baptist. But you wouldn't put, how many would put up with John the Baptist today? You bunch of vipers. 
Oh, he'd tell it. We need some Elijahs. Apostle Paul's. So what happened to our landmarks of preaching? That heaven is real. Have there anybody really preach on heaven anymore? I do when the Lord tells me to. You ever really hear anybody in church anymore? In the church of God preach on hell? No. Why? Because we have moved that landmark. We want our people to feel comfortable. We don't want to scare them away. They may be a $100,000 a month tithe payer. So we don't want to offend them. I want to tell you, you better. I, I know to. I know this pastor preaches the way I'm preaching, but I'm telling people on the way of live stream uh, that's listening to this tonight, uh, hey amen, you need to understand uh, it's time for you to make sure that you get the landmarks back in place uh, and preach righteousness and purity if we want to see revival, if we want to see people saved, uh, if we want to see people healed, uh, if we want to see, uh, praise God, uh, the revival that God's wanting to do in the last days, uh, we got to get back to the old landmarks uh, that God has placed the church in. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help us. We haven't. Where is the landmark of preaching? Heaven is real. Hell is hot and eternity is long and life is not. I was watching old gun smoke last night. And when somebody was out to kill Marshall Dillon, that boy, he never did die. Somebody was out to kill Marshall Dillon, and the guy says, says, well, I said, how are you going to kill him? He said, I ain't heard of nobody had the gift of not breathing for after a while. <laughs> Can't tell you you're going to die, but you better die right. You see, people are filling churches, but leaving unsaved, unconverted, and unfilled, entertained, but not changed. Laugh, but never weep. Pastor Danny, I appreciate you because you got a you got a tender heart. Pastor, you got a tender heart. But everybody wants to laugh. It's okay to laugh. I like to laugh. I could tell you a couple of stories about that preacher and you'll laugh. But it ain't all about laughing. Somebody's got to weep like Nehemiah. Somebody's got to pray like Nehemiah. Somebody's got to say, nobody must care. The walls are broken down. Everybody's broken. But Nehemiah had a prayer to weep before God and the walls were restored. Can I tell you? God bring back weeping in the house of God again. Somebody praise him in this house. Would you lift your hand and wave it to the Lord in this place? I feel His presence. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord. For I have not changed, but my people has changed. I am still. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am still the same yesterday, today, and forever. I have not moved, but my people have moved from me, saith the Lord. I, the Lord, saith to thee tonight, move back into my presence. Move back into my boundaries. For I have not left you, but you have left me. But I am here waiting on you, saith the Lord, to restore the joy of the Lord to your life, saith the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see that, and ask. Somebody say ask for the old paths. Look at this now. Where is the good way? Now, there is a generation that will flat fight you over the old path in the word. And he says, walk therein. This is powerful right here. Walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. Everybody wants to. 
Everybody wants everything else. But they don't want their souls to have. If you want your, the reason why there's so much turmoil and, and frustration because their soul is not at rest. But I want to tell you, you walk in the old path. Hallelujah. For the Rob, he said, you'll find rest in your soul. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to tell you, uh, Pastor Danny, tonight, uh, my soul is at rest uh, because I have walked uh, in the old path. Uh, and I'll not leave, Pastor, the old path uh, because... <laughs> Praise God. That's rest for my soul. Uh, and everybody's trying to find something to fulfill it. But praise God. All I know is, he said, walk therein and you'll find rest for your souls. And they said, we will not walk there. That's where we are today. Do not change the message. Now, we may change some methods. Some methods is all right to change, but you better not change the message. Amen? You want chandeliers? That's a method. You want just the old lights we was rolled up in in the church? That's a method. You just walk in. There ain't no switches to pull no work. You just walk in dark and you try to find your chain and pull it. That's a method, but you better not change the message. Because a message changes hearts. <laughs> Lord, the reason why there's a group of people standing here tonight is because you, I feel the Holy Ghost, because you still got the message. The message is right. The message is holy. The message is pure. The message is steadfast. And I shall not be moved, praise God, just because uh, another church down the road uh, may look like they got a bigger circus, uh, but they got elephants here. Huh? And I want to tell you, they'll mess you up too. Uh, amen. I want to tell you, I want to stay right where God has me. I want to stay right in the middle of the old path so that I can have rest in my life. We need to take God's word, the deed, and search the landmark. What we need to do when you go to the courthouse, my wife and I bought property, and you go to the courthouse, and or you have an attorney to search the deed for you. You want to know where the landmarks is? Get off the internet, and you'll find them. <laughs> Amen. Stop hopping from conference to conference, and you'll find it. Or if I can just get George Myers' prayer with me, baloney. She says good things. I know she does. But I don't need her. If I can just go to Baton Rouge and let Jimmy Swagger pray for me, I don't care if he pray for me. That's okay. But he don't know where the landmarks are like this does. And I love all those people. You want to... <laughs> if you got a, if you got a house in Greenham, Kentucky, where I'm at, you can't come, Lord, this is a good. You can't come to this county and find the deed to where I live. Oh, glory to God. Oh, that'll preach. And everybody's searching for, oh, Lord, help me. They're searching for deeds somewhere that don't even have landmarks. Oh, Lord, help me. You ain't going to find it in another county. You're not going to find another city. But can I tell you, from cover to cover, amen, the deed, praise God, the title of each search is right here. The landmarks is in the Word of God, praise God. And all you got to do is go to the spiritual courthouse, open up the book, and you'll find it. Hallelujah. Give him praise in his house. So stop moving the plumb line of the Bible to fit your lifestyle. I'm getting very close. I'm doing good, Pastor. I want to go over here to this non-Pentecostal church and see how they do about it. I pastored a guy. Every time he'd get upset, he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. Every time he'd get upset when I preach on the Holy Ghost, he'd go visit a non-Pentecostal church and study the Holy Ghost, trying to, but they couldn't help him at all. <laughs> and we got people that, 
that's going here and there trying to find answers to the problems. And the answer is right there. It's in the old pen. When, when me and my sister there, we, we, we uh, <coughs> me and her spent more time at my grandpa's place uh, growing up than my other brother and sister. And grandpa had old, old paths all over that old 14 acre knobby land. He had a, he had a, just a knobby old farm. And, but it was grandpa's farm. When I was a little kid, I, th I, I followed grandpa. He'd go down to the old well, and it was way down on the hill from where he lived. And he'd get his old lard bucket, and I'd get my two little lard buckets. And I'd follow grandpa all the way up the hill. And I watched uh, grandpa never spilt any water going up that hill walk carrying that water. I made sure, Brother Danny, I, I, I didn't spill no water going up that hill. Grandpa had all kind of trails, old paths, that he made in the woods. And you know what? I got along real good on that old farm because I followed the paths of my grandpa. Had I got off somewhere where there wasn't no path, I might have got lost and got eaten up by a panther somewhere because panthers is in that holler. But I want to tell you... <laughs> Abraham Moses made a path I'm still walking it. Elijah Elisha made paths and I'm still walking it. Daniel walked the same path. I could go on and on and on. The apostles walked the same path. I will not compromise and get out of the path because you don't know how you can be destroyed by walking out of the path that you was raised in. Landmarks as they come to the music. Here's some landmarks that we better not lose. Repentance. We better not lose the landmark of repentance. You ever have repented? There's times I've had to repent. You ever been mean to your wife for two days? You better repent. Be on the couch for about a month. I always made sure before I ever got in the pulpit that me and her never had any problem. I got it fixed, Sister Lawless, before we got in the pulpit. Because if I'd gotten the pulpit trying to preach with, 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 with bad ill feelings for her, I'd be a hypocrite in the pulpit, and that's dangerous. You don't, don't, get, you don't do that stuff. Landmark of conviction. Where, where is the conviction in the church today? The landmark of a Holy Ghost moving and people weeping under the conviction and the power of the Holy Ghost. White knuckling the seat. And you hear them cry out, Oh God! You don't hear that in church much today. Oh, here's a good one. Landmark of sanctification. You look that word up, it means make holy. Your body is a temple of the Lord. I preached at Danville last Sunday. Jesus came into the temple and seen them changing money and selling and I don't have time to preach yet but he ran them out and he said my house shall be called a house of now, my house shall be called a house of prayer he didn't he never did say it's a house of worship he never did say it's a house of teaching he never did say it's a house of prayer praise he said my house is a house of prayer. And what I'm about to say, people don't like. But what, what if we prayed for the first hour and a half in our churches, then worship 
after an hour and a half of prayer, not many people would hang around. But what we do, we worship and praise, which is good, for an hour and a half, preach 30 minutes, 15 minutes of prayer request, two minutes of prayer, and everybody goes home. But he said, my house should be called. And, 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 and let me close with this. <clears throat> Moses built the tabernacle. And the Holy of Holies is outside of the, the outer court. God dwelt, Pastor, God dwelt in that tent. Solomon built, took 22 years to build the temple of God. In today's money, it would have been $200 trillion. So 22 years, and God dwelled in that enormous tabernacle. And it was tore down. And then another tabernacle was built after that. And that's the one Jesus walked in. And then when he was on the cross, the veil of the temple rent from top to bottom. So God don't dwell just as beautiful as this sanctuary is. God don't dwell nowhere in this sanctuary. Nowhere. Absolutely not. But when Sister Richardson walks in, then he fills the house. When Pastor, Sister Jean, when you walk in, then his presence fills the house. <laughs> and then Jesus says, No longer do I feel my presence in the temple of Solomon. But he said, Now you are my temple. Hey, <laughs> you are my temple. Hey, he told Boko Sataya. Hey, hallelujah. You are my temple, hallelujah. And one of the landmarks we better take care of, uh, you, when you was a sinner, you'd done what you wanted to to your temple. Tobacco, snuffing, drinking, dipping, sipping, everything else. But once you got saved, you can't do with your temple the way you did before you got saved because your temple belonged to the devil then. But now this is a temple of the Lord. You can't put into it what you used to put into it. You can't defile it like you used to defile it. Amen. And one of the landmarks is, uh, he prays, God, be ye holy, for I am holy. The landmark is, uh, we would better keep ourselves sanctified. Landmark, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Integrity, holy living. Communion and feet washing I still believe in. The fruit of the Spirit, divine healing. The gifts of the Spirit, the fivefold ministry. Would you stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the old landmarks, Brother McQuarrie, that our church has always had is our altars. I'm telling you, people were delivered. I, I'm just going to be plain honest with you. Is that okay, Pastor? My wife and I recently, I've done a revival at a missionary Methodist church in North Carolina that's got more fire in them than most church of God's has got in them. We've been to some Baptist churches. I'm telling you, Calvin Ray Evans Church, he's way out about 30 minutes from my house, way out in the middle of nowhere. Out in the middle of nowhere. You've probably seen him on TV. Community Tabernacle. We was there for 930 service on Sunday morning recently, and 600 people at 930 in that old country church. And I ain't exaggerating. My wife can tell you. 
every song the Yates family started singing. I used to pastor. People would come to the altars. There'd be one to come. Fifteen followed and stay there till they got done praying. All of a sudden, there'd be another come. Fifteen people would come and lay in the altars, and they wouldn't get up until that one got up. Then the next thing you know, it was like an hour and a half. People just kept rolling, 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 rolling to the altars, and they made the altar. Praise God! People getting up, weeping and crying because something happened at the altar. One of our landmarks has been ripped from us. Is we have no altar services anymore. Oh, but God, the altar is where I got saved. Your altar may have been an oak tree, but you need an altar in the church. Your altar may have been on the back of an old tractor, but you need an altar in the church. Heavenly Father, I've shared my burden tonight. I've shared my heart. And God, I know tonight this is a great church. I know tonight, God, this is, you got a, you got a great pastor and family in this church, God, that holds on to the landmarks. But sometimes there's people sitting in our churches. They hear what's going on outside the landmark. They hear what's going on on the other side of this church. And hear what's going on over there, God. And the devil tries to pull them away. Oh, but God, let us, uh, let us, let us stay, be steadfast and movable. Always abound in the work of God. Let us not move, oh God. Let us not move. Tonight as they get ready to sing, if there's anybody that just seems to say, God, I need to... I need to repent of some things today, God. I, I just need to lay some burdens. I, I, I feel this, Pastor. There's some people that has got burdens, and I don't know what they are. It ain't none of my business. But you got a burden, and you just need to lay on the altar. Would you get out of your seat and come right now? Just you and the Lord. Come.